You know, I think it's great to be in environments where we can learn from each other. Coaching is a very important component to, to the game and often you will find very good teams with uh, poor coaching and they don't perform to the levels they need to and you can, you can find uh, very good teams with great coaching and they can, they can go places. Um, so I think uh, it's always for me exciting to add value into the coaching space. I'm particularly excited by coaching because coaching is leadership. And I think in, in our small capacities, if we can work out how we can become a really effective leader of people, then you can be an incredibly good coach. And I've been a coach only for, since, since I retired, which is 2004. So I've only been a coach for 12 years. But what is my next level in my coaching space? What have been my greatest experiences? What have been some of my worst experiences? Coaching kind of covers not only sport, it can be, it can be in any industry. And, um, I think people are become, becoming more aware of the need for it and the importance that it has as a leadership position in any environment to kind of add value to a team or an organization to allow individuals to optimize their performances. I think probably my greatest experience in coaching is the year that I had a very poor year with a team. In fact, I got fired from the Delhi Daredevils in my second year. It was my best year of coaching I've ever had because I learned so much about coaching in that year. I think it's important for us as coaches to understand the kind of things that we can do in our day-to-day -day behaviors that will make a difference and will have an influence on the players that we work with. Well, it's nice to see that it doesn't matter who we are as coaches, we all need to follow the processes and there are universal values and um, plans we have to follow in order to coach teams. There's no magic new things. It's all about the hard work and the processes needed to be followed in order to educate um, the leaders of the future. Okay, so I heard a coach the other day. I was down on the side of a field the other day in a school game. And the one bowler was struggling with his, with his bowling. Okay? He wasn't getting it outside off stump. He was bowling quite a few balls down leg stump. And the next thing I heard this scream from the side of the field and was the coach. You know what the coach said? Stop bowling the ball on the leg side! Is that going to help him? I think the, the goal was just to come and share my best thinking with a group of young coaches who are aspiring to become top coaches, which is fantastic. You know, my hope was that uh, the sharing um, was an opportunity for them to look at things slightly differently or to pick up one or two tips that could help them in their coaching careers. To play at that level, to coach at that level, to be successful at that level for as consistently as he has, um, those are unique experiences that can only come from someone who's physically gone through all of that. I mean, some of the players and some of the, the coaches haven't gone through that physically, so they have to hear from people who have been there. And f for someone like Gary to come and, and spend his time with us and, and educate us about his experiences is absolutely wonderful and inspiring. We have two types of coaching, in my opinion. We have reactive, Okay, and reactive coaching is when the events happen. It's easy to coach reactively. Okay, so when someone has bowled the ball down leg, it's easy to shout or bowl the, stop bowling the ball down leg. It's reactive. There's no, it can't help. It's gone. Okay, and then you get proactive coaching. I mean, there are probably three areas. I think you have to have a good understanding technically of the game. You need to be able to kind of understand the error that he might potentially be making and then come up with a method in terms of how you can get him to shift in that space. And I think that's where the real challenge lies in coaching. Like, uh, someone has got an issue at home and he knows that he can come to you to deal with the problem. Yeah, great. That's, that's very, very important. But you know how much energy it takes to sit and listen to someone? Eh? Okay, because we'd rather, just, we'd rather just tell. But now we've got to listen. So I think, I think one of the massive roles of coaching is being a good listener. Then I think you, you need to check in with yourself as an individual yeah. and what your motives are, and what your, yeah, what your growth points are, what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. And I think you've got to build relationships, you know, relationships across all levels with your players, um, with your bosses, um, with all the stakeholders within that team that you're working with or environment that you're working in. The one thing I will carry is the, the processes again. There's no quick fix to being successful. It's all about doing the hard yards, doing the boring things for longer. Um, 
It's not they're very seldom that we have mavericks like uh, Abby de Villiers and the Gilchrist of the world that come through and the Virat Kohli's. The, the, for the mere mortals, we have to follow the processes and go through everything step by step in order to be successful. Okay, guys, that's, a, that's just a, a snapshot. I mean, we could go on the whole day. You are the principal leader with the captain of that team and you have a kind of massive responsibility to drive um, the value system of, of that team on a daily basis. I don't know if there are any questions or anything you want to ask before we wrap up, Jackie. How long have we got?